Hey guys! I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I'm live. A hard place. Um, it came about for two reasons. Um, first reason is I was reading. I love to read, so I w was reading a book by, by Gerard Conley called um, Boy Erased. It was um, about these ex-gay kind of uh, programs where they try and turn uh, gay and lesbian uh, people into uh, uh, heterosexual people. And as I was reading this book, I was really heartbroken um, because it was just um, it was just so sad, like, the mental abuse, they didn't physically abuse them, but I would call it mental abuse, um, that they, that they, um, forced on these individuals, it was indescribable, and as I read it, my heart just broke, it really just broke, um, because I, I've, I haven't heard a story like that before. And if you want to read the book, it's called Boy Erased. A phenomenal piece of writing. Um, me as a writer, I was just, like, I was so excited because his descriptions were so vivid and the words he used were so awesome. But... My heart began to br to break for two reasons because, oh, okay, it's like I know that this is this is a sin. The Bible clearly says that, um, but at the same time, these are the LGBT community. They're people as well and my heart began to broke to break as he began to describe all the rules and the fact that he had to uh write down all his uh sexual fantasies with other men or whatever the fact that he had to like um bear his soul to a bunch of strangers and um, like all the rules where they, they called them FIs and MIs. I forget what, what they meant by those things, but every night, uh, he had to write, he had to do homework and tell his most personal thoughts to these people. Um, it was very dogmatic, and part of it, being a Christian, part of it, I understood where they were coming from, but part of it, I was really upset about, I, I just was like, no, that's not right at all, no, and then, as I was, as I was uh, reading, I was like, the, the church is in a hard place because you don't want to be dogmatic and force people to believe what you believe or whatever, and you don't want to be 
um, like just lenient to say it's okay, you're gay, it's okay, the Lord loves you or whatever. And what I'm coming to now is, um, and when I was talking to the Lord about this, I said, Lord, what do we do? Um, do we just pretend that that part of the Bible does not exist? Or do we just, um, or do we just continue uh, being forceful and dogmatic? And he said, he said, you don't need to be either. He said, he, he said, um, he brought to my mind the old hymn, like, over the, he brought to my mind the old, old hymn, over the blood of Jesus. And I think when we think of sins and we, we think of, um, transgressions, we forget that we all have sin. We all have things that we struggle with. And you could say, yes, it's in the Bible. But what I always say is there is something in the Bible to knock everyone uh, to the wall. It might not be your scripture. It might not be your thing. It might not be, be that. It might be that other person's thing. But trust me, there is something in the Bible that will knock you to the wall. And um, I think we just need to, first of all. Um, before we judge people, before we damn them to hell, we need to put ourselves into their um, shoes. So, um, speaking of, okay, let's say if I were a lesbian. I'm not, but let's say if I were. And I was... Um, walking down the street, and this Christian person uh, just said, um, you know you're going to hell, your lifestyle is wrong, and it's a sin against God. I know I would be very upset. I'd be like, who are you to tell me anything? We don't have a relationship with each other. We don't even know each other. You don't even know me. You don't even know my partner. You don't even know my story. And you're, you're judging me thinking that you're right. And I, I, I agree with correction. I agree with all of that. I agree with accountability. But before accountability... Before correction, you, um, we should have, um, we should know the person, get to know their story, get to know them, not only just for their sin, and I'm talking about past homosexuality, I'm talking about any sin, get before you judge them and before you try and correct them, have a relationship with them. Um, like, develop a relationship with them. We, we sometimes as Christians get up on our high horse thinking that we have the answers and we need to tell people what is what. We don't need to tell people nothing. Because sometimes deep inside they already know. And even if they don't, it's not for us to tell them. We are not anybody's holy person or holy spirit. And if God hasn't given you the axe, 
access to that person's life, to that person's family, to that person's story. Um, you, uh, you, you can't go around attacking people or thinking that these are the rules you have to follow. Because I look at Jesus and his ministry, and he never went around correct, uh, correcting people. The, in fact, the only people he spoke harshly to were those who judged others, those who felt that they were that they were beyond reproach. Um, that those are the only people he um, uh, corrected. The people that were hurting, the people that were in pain, the people that dealt with prostitution, the people that did all of that. He loved them. And as far as God um, uh, getting getting rid of Saddam and Gomorrah, that, the, the, the town of Saddam and Gomorrah was, was full of all kinds of stuff. We often think it was just homosexuality, uh, men sleeping with men and all that stuff, women sleeping with women. There was that too, but there was this kind of uh, um, other behaviors that weren't right. And at that time, God made that decision for that group of people. So quite often the difficult thing is when you read the Bible, it was written um, for uh, It was written for our learning, but it wasn't written to us. So when these people were writing the scriptures, it, they didn't know that millions of people would be taking uh, the, the words that God gave them and, uh, and sharing it with them and taking it as, as gospel. And it is the gospel. And we need to t we need to take the Bible seriously, but we also need to remember it was also written in a, in for a specific people in a specific time. So we need to we need not we need not take that. Um, to mean that we need to now condemn people to hell and whatever. And it's a really hard place that the church is in on many levels. Um, uh, we're in a hard, hard place because on one side of the world, we're dealing with hunger, we're dealing with physical issues. And we, we deal with that here too, but not on the same level. Uh, we're dealing with people uh, that can't find water, that don't have, that, that don't have uh, proper homes, or that have to walk for miles to get even food that work for pennies a day that sleep on the street and I'm talking about thousands of people while on the other side of the world we're dealing with um, um, like an excess like here in the in the western world uh, Canada and the US we're dealing with uh, the sin of excess, like we just want more and more and more cars and more this and more that. 
and we're just lo- we're hungry, but we're hungry in a different way. We we are emotionally and spiritually hungry. Um, where those are on the other side of the globe are physically hungry and physically thirsty. So it's a hard place that the church is in. Like, do we do we do we ignore sin and just say, okay, you can go on with your sin? Or do we confront it? And if we confront it, how do we confront it? Um, the first thing when I was um, when I was talking to the Lord, which I said already, He said, "Put yourself in that person's shoes." When you are about to say something about a person's life. Put yourself in that person's shoes. Would you like that same thing said about your life? Or if that person could see you in your quiet hours and see what you struggle with, would you like them to comment on it? To say, you're going to hell. You're like, or... Um, being nice, what I call nice, nasty, but they say it in a fake nice way, but it's nasty. The comment is nasty. And, um, nasty being mean and all that stuff. Would, would you appreciate them telling you the what for? telling you that that you are going to hell telling you that you're a sinner and one one thing to like as i was reading as i was reading as i was reading this i was like well we're all sinners he kept saying make me pure make me pure make me pure but but we can work towards purity, but we will never fully be pure as long as we're in the human body. We will always have struggles. We will always have things that we deal with. And let us not forget, if it weren't for the cross, we'd be stuck too. We need... We all need the cross. Gay people, straight people, fluid people, uh, black people, white people, we all need the cross. Nobody's better than anyone. And the only difference between us and people who don't know the Lord is is knowledge that's the only difference we have the knowledge of the lord's grace and the lord's forgiveness and if the lord forgave us what what why do we think that the lord cannot redeem them without our help without our say so god has strategies to de- to deal with anything to deal with any person and the thing with god is he knows how to deal with this person and that person he knows what that person's what that person needs what that person's needs are how he needs to uh, work with them how he needs to um, minister to them he will send uh, the right people in their lives if they need an accountability partner if you are not assigned to a person's life shut up about what you think they're doing or what they should do or what they need like 
if you are not assigned to their life, if you don't know their story, shut up. So, yeah, I said it. <laughs> um, we're too quick to give our opinions on other people's lives. And I think we just need to mind your own business. <laughs> and I think that if you are if you are assigned to a person that is going through a struggle struggle, God will give you the right words. God will give you the right tools to help that person. And make sure that it is God assigning you to that person's life. Not you taking it upon yourself to assign yourself to that person's life. Because if you do, you're missing, you're missing your assignment when you're busy in somebody's business. And it's not your job, it's God's job. And I know the church is in a hard place because we have to stand for the Bible, but we need to have God's guidance. And another thing he said to me um, is, is um, as, aside from putting yourself in, that person's shoes is we need to start praying and fasting for for tools and for strategy and the the strategy we need to start praying and fasting for is what do you want us to do how do you want us to bring the word what worship songs do you want us to bring out? Because um, I was thinking about this. Every, and I said this before in a video and I can't remember which one. But every 10 years, every generation, or every big uh, change in history, it, it came out in the music. It came out in the fashion, and it came out in the attitudes of people. So after the World War, you saw a lot more more women working after World War Two. You saw a lot of things changing when women used to stay at home and men used to go to work. After World War II, because the men had to go to work, the no, because the men had to go to war, the women had to go to work. And before that, um, in the, I think it was the, uh, the uh, 30s, it was the Industrial Revolution, so all these wi women had to uh, go to work. It was all about industry and factory and all that stuff. So it was a change in the attitude. And if you listen to songs from the 60s and all of that stuff when all that war and stuff was going on you'd you'd hear songs about war you'd hear um come together right now over me and you'd hear come on people people now smile on your brother everybody get together let us love one another right now. Because that was um, the feeling of the time. That was the message of the time. So I'm asking myself, um, after this coronavirus, first of all, what is the sound that you want um, coming 
from the the church and society at, uh, at large what what do you want us to say during these, this crisis uh, what what strategies do you want us uh, to as the church to bring forth what do you want us to do and it's a really hard place I, I think that me me personally I think the church is in in between um, a kind of uh, changing of the guard as I said before uh, God's word never changes but his strategies do but the thing is we want things to go back to how they always were we want service to act like it uh, like it always did and God wants to I I feel in my spirit totally flip so we're we're at a place now I think globally where the body of Christ uh, has to make a decision like we're we're coming from something and going to something else what we're going to is I'm not really sure what it is but I th think it's going to be greater than we've ever known and I think the Lord is saying for our personal lives and for our churches just to embrace the new and he's saying yes this is a hard place this has been a hard year and a half but follow me and I'll take you to it and there's I'll take you to uh, where I want you to be and when I take you to it, there'll, there'll be resources and there'll be stuff that that I already got planned for you. What you're worried about, saints, he's already solved. And he wants to, to, to me to tell you, don't worry, just walk. I'll say that again don't worry just walk a lot of you have been worrying like oh my god how is this is gonna work how is this gonna look he said don't worry just walk uh, the first thing that Jesus said to his disciples is uh, come follow me so that's what he's saying to us come follow me and I will give you the new agenda I will give you what I want uh, the church to be. I will give you what I want for your children. I will give you what I want for your career. You don't have to worry. Just walk. So, guys. Oh, and the uh, before before I go, the other thing that brought about this sermon was. Um, Hard, the song Hard Place by, by a band called Her. Um, I will post it later when, when I'm finished. So, in between, in between, um, Gerard Conley's book, Boy Erased, and this song called Hard Place by her, that's where I got the sermon from. And there's a part in this song that says, I'm caught between your love and the hard place. Um, like for me, like you want to love people and, and make sure they go to um, not make sure, um, give them the tools for the gospel, but you don't want to, uh, push them so far that they don't want anything to do with the church. So, that's why I was thinking of this song by her, which I will post. I'll see you later, guys. Bye. 
I'm caught between your love and the hard place. Bye, guys. See you later.